Hey guys, welcome to MTG Eternal. Today we're going to be covering the completion of six planeswalkers and Phyrexia all will be one, so let's get right into it. Although Nahiri, the core stone for Drolithomancer, previously fought with Nisa Ravain, the elven planeswalker, in their home plane of Zendikar, Nahiri set aside her differences to help the Gatewatch against New Phyrexia. After the alliance of planeswalkers arrived on New Phyrexia, Nahiri was forced into combat against a powerful Phyrexian. She tried to help save Kaido, the human ninja from Kamigawa, who was unconscious at the time, and the Wanderer, the Emperor of Kamigawa, who kept flickering back and forth uncontrollably. She won the fight against this Phyrexian, but it inflicted a wound on the back of her neck, injecting her with Phoresis. As she arrived at the Mirren camp, Malira, the only person known in MTG history to be able to cure the completion process, offers to cure Nahiri. Sadly, Malira's healing process would incapacitate Nahiri for days, so Nahiri declined. Malira was once able to cure Phoresis completely as seen in her first card here, but at some point, Jin Gataxius, the blue aligned praetor of New Phyrexia, was able to perfect the glistening oil and make it even more dangerous than it already was. Nahiri couldn't bear the thought of slowing down their fight against the Phyrexians, so she decided to keep pushing through it. During their entry into New Phyrexia, many of the Alliance members were scattered among the spears of the plane. Luca, a military-trained human planeswalker from Ikoria, became stranded in the Hunter's Maze, the Spear of Vorinclex, the Voice of Hunger. Luca has the power to connect with animals. As he searches for a beast to connect with to learn more about the Hunter's Maze, he finds Nisa and the Wanderer fighting back Phyrexians. Little did they know, a Phyrexian Hulk was sitting in the trees waiting to finish them off. The Wanderer could not control her spark during this moment and unfortunately planes walked away again, leaving Nisa to fend for herself. Luca used his magic to connect with this Phyrexian Hulk and turned it over to their side, for now. Nisa was appalled with Luca's decision, but he reassured her that if he feels any pull from the Hulk, he will end it. Nisa agrees and they continue on their journey to meet back up with the others. From time to time, Luca kept hearing the calls of Phyrexia from the Hulk he bonded with, but he continued to resist. Suddenly, a woman screams to watch out as a Phyrexian pops out of nowhere, pinning Nisa down. It prevents her from using her weapon and even her magic. Luca melts his mind with the Phyrexian and tells it to secure him. It does this by shooting wires into his chest and hoisting him up. Instead of pain, Luca feels powerful. This is the moment when Luca becomes completed as he fuses with his Phyrexian beast. He was still there mentally and used this newfound power to kill all of the Phyrexian in his and Nisa's way. The calls of Phyrexia became even stronger now as they whispered to him promises of power. The group stumble upon a fight between Vorinclex and the Phyrexian elf, Glisa. As they watched on, the Wanderer flickers away. Nisa wants to leave and find the others, but Luca wants to prove that with his new powers, they could take on Glisa and Vorinclex. Luca confronts Glisa while Nisa took on Vorinclex. Luca was perfectly matched with Glisa. She smiles as Luca feels the thrill of a challenge, something he hasn't felt in years. Luca laughs with joy, but then he stumbles. He calls out to his Phyrexian beast and it listens completely. He then fuses even more with this beast to the point where they become one entity. Even their minds fuse together. With this fusion, Luca can now see how Vorinclex controls this spear. Strength is law. The strong are put on a pedestal while the weak have to succumb to them. Vorinclex then looks at Luca and commands him to attack Nisa. He tells Luca, only the strong survive. The Wanderer flickers back for a brief moment in order to tell Nisa to run, and then flickers away again. Glisa commands Luca to hunt Nisa and bring her back alive, because she can be of use to new Phyrexia. As they venture to the Dross Pits and then Children's Coliseum, they find Braska, the Gorgon Planeswalker from Ravnica, in the middle of an all-out fight against multiple Phyrexians. She was heavily injured and already infected with Phoresis. Jace, the human mind mage planeswalker from Vern, would not accept that the woman that he loves is going to die, so he tries to stay and save her. 
He even tries to convince Malira to cure her. The injuries were so bad that even Malira said that Vraska was far too gone. Jace finally accepted this and decided to give his love a meaningful end. He placed both Vraska and himself in an illusion to help them live at least one more happy day together. They spent their time left wandering through the streets of Ravnica and visiting guild halls and museums together. Vraska thanks him and says, I love you, as she rests her head on his shoulder. She pleads for him to leave, but he resists, not wanting to let go, and allows the illusion to continue. This went on for far too long, though. Vraska became fully completed during this illusion and stabbed her stinger through Jace and flashing her gaze at him for the very first time, infecting him with phoresis. For the glory of Phyrexia, she whispered. He covers his eyes from hers to prevent himself from getting turned to stone and flees. The Colosseum fills with Phyrexians and the hero struggle to escape. Nahiri, knowing she doesn't have long, makes a selfless sacrifice to save her friends. She created a large blast big enough to explode the Colosseum and bring everyone down into the fair basilica, Elish Norn's sphere. Nahiri then disappeared. The others survived along with the filigree silex that Jace was holding on to. The group pushed towards their goal to reach Elish Norn's altar. Malira offers to heal Jace, but he refused. He did not want them to waste precious time by trying to cure him especially since he lost Frasca. The group continued their travels to Elish Norn's altar. They went through the Mycosynth Gardens, being careful not to allow the spores to infect them. Tyvar and Kaido used their magic to create a hex gold layer for all of the heroes to shield them from Phyrexian infection. The group approaches the invasion tree, Realmbreaker, and find that it is too late. The tree had already connected itself and New Phyrexia to all of the planes in the multiverse. They go inside of the tree and find Karn's severed head along with his parts scattered around. His head turns to them and warns them that they shouldn't have come. The group unsheaths their weapons and prepare for the oncoming Phyrexian forces. This is where they encounter a Johnny Goldmane, our favorite Leonin planeswalker, now turned Phyrexian. His appearance had changed drastically compared to when we last saw him in Dominaria United. He wore red and white armor that seemed to grow from his own body, showing that he is now part of Elish Norn's Porcelain Legion. He tries to convince Elsbeth, his old friend, to join New Phyrexia so that they can be together forever. He uses a calm and compassionate voice to try and win her over, almost as if he is still in there somewhere. She refuses and then he says she technically doesn't have to be alive to join them, and attacks. Tabolt was also there alongside him and was covered in bony plates and a fork tail that leaked glistening oil. He had been completed by the seed that Vorinclates claimed he would remove on Kaldheim. Instead, he let this seed fester until it fully completed Tabolt. Tyvar decided to take on Tabolt while Elsbeth fought a Johnny. The rest of the group continued on. After the group traveled through the Mycosynth Gardens and found the invasion tree, Jace made a decision. He believed that since he was on the brink of completion, he would use the filigree silex to destroy Realmbreaker and New Phyrexia. Kaya did not like this idea of Jace using the silex because it could mean that the worlds connected to Realmbreaker would also be destroyed. The silex is so powerful that it can even distort time, like it did with Urza's original Golgothian silex. There would be no telling how much damage the silex would do to the multiverse. Jace felt like there was no other way to end this conflict than to end it all and start anew. He was willing to risk everything in order to stop the Phyrexians. Kaya rushes forward and grabs Jace's wrist, stopping him from picking up the Silex again. Kaya then draws her dagger out as Jace's eyes glow inhumanly blue. Kaya grabs the Silex but quickly realizes it's an illusion. Jace looks over at her from the rim of the real Silex. He cut his forehead and dripped glistening oil into the Silex. He filled it with all of his suffering, grief, and sorrow. As he did this, he used the same words that Urza did while detonating the first Silex. Wipe the land clear. Bring the end. He then says with deep regret, I'm sorry. Elsbeth planeswalks to the heroes and sees what is happening. She takes her sword, Luxior, and drives it into Jace and moves him out of the way. She grabbed the Silex and planeswalked away to an unknown destination beyond the blind eternities.
As the tree fully activates, an opening in the wall of the tree opens wider, and Elish Norn, the mother of machines, stepped into the room. Her soldiers followed behind her. Jace's corpse rises as Luxior falls out of him, and Kaido grabs it. He goes to join his new Phyrexian leader alongside the completed Nisa, Nahiri, and Tamiyo. Elish Norn proceeds to try and convince the remaining heroes to join New Phyrexia. She explains that although Nisa and Nahiri are both from Zendikar, they have had bad blood between them. She said that now they are completed. They are one. They are now sisters. The heroes declined and Elish Norn clicked her claws together and declared them enemies. The invasion of the multiverse finally begins. So what do you guys think about Phyrexia All Will Be One? There were so many shocking surprises in store for us in this set, and I still can't believe they actually completed Jace and Nisa. Which completed Planeswalker is your favorite so far? Let me know down below. I personally loved Vraska the most and cannot wait to get my hands on a copy. Like always though, let me know what you guys want to see next. What character do you want me to know more about? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks again for watching MTG Eternal.